Good morning. I've got your four energy stories for this, the third week of November. First one's really interesting. We got uh, Australian mining giant Fortescue, uh, fourth largest iron mining company in the world. They recently announced a plan to develop 235 gigawatts of renewables and hydrogen. Chairman Andrew Forrest didn't lay out a timeline, but committed to spending Australian $1 billion on decarbonization of hydrogen tech through 2023. How big was this whole thing? He said in energy conversion terms, what they intend to produce would be the equal of Total and Chevron's total 2019 oil output. So really big project. The idea is to start with a small amount, just 100 gigawatts initial build out of wind and solar, uh, with a focus on green hydrogen, and then use those initial cash flows to further extend out. The company has 40 executives working on the plan right now. They have already visited 23 countries. They intend to visit another 24 or so to look at various governments' commitments to the green economy and figure out where they can fit in. The company will also start by eating its own dog food. It's in the Pilbara region of Australia. It's got a 60 megawatt solar project supporting an iron mine there with another 150 megawatt solar project with batteries to follow. They intend also to introduce hydrogen into the iron ore operations, uh, combining solar production with Australia's largest electrolyzer and then using that for their bus fleet and eventually moving into trains and ships as well. So hydrogen is starting to power their transportation economy and they intend to get to net zero on or before 2040. So that's a pretty big deal. Meanwhile, here in the U.S., in the sign of the times, Talon Energy Group, a large energy holding company with a lot of power plants, announced it struck a deal with Sierra Club to retire 3.6 gigawatts of PJM power plants in um, Pennsylvania and Maryland. They also announced an intent to build a gigawatt of solar plants, and they're going to start with 100 megawatts. Uh, their Solar One project, which will be adjacent to their Montour coal project, and that'll start in late 2021. So a real switch there. And then back to hydrogen, the Department of Energy released its uh, long-awaited hydrogen program plan. And the goal here is to essentially coordinate R&D and development activities across a lot of our national agencies. This will involve um, what they say is, quote, coordinated departmental effort to advance the affordable production, transport, storage, and use of hydrogen across the different sectors of the economy. I read the plan last week. It does a pretty good job of laying out the challenges and the target um, goals, the prices to hit, everything from electrolyzers to the cost of green energy to transport and storage. Very similar to what DOE did with the Sunshot Initiative, where they set goals for the price of solar on rooftops and utility scale. So this is a pretty good sign coming out of the Trump administration that there is an intent and one can expect the Biden administration to essentially to double down on that intent to figure out how hydrogen can fit and support the sustainable economy. And then the last bit of news this week, uh, PV Magazine reported that MISO has 57 gigawatts of utility scale solar in its queue right now to be built out. Now, Compare that to what's actually constructed today and delivering electrons into MISO, 314 megawatts. This would be a huge jump. Now, it won't all get built. Typically, if you look at interconnection queues, roughly 20% in the past has gotten built. Although those numbers, that 20% usually applies to large, larger coal plants, gas plants, etc. Because these are smaller, 50, 100 megawatt type facilities, there's a good chance that more of them percentage-wise could be built. And 57 gigs is pretty large, but not when you compare it to ERCOT's 75 gigawatts in their queue with, I think it's roughly six gigs, gigs going to be built out in the next year, year and a half. So those are your stories for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.